Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. So we'll start off with Wayne, who's uh, going to speak on the third step prayer. Thank you, Dave. I am Wayne, and I'm an alcoholic. Hi, Wayne. When I, for, for quite a few years in AA, when I chaired a meeting, I would uh, say at the beginning that this is the uh, biggest privilege of my life. And, and indeed, I thought it was. But in the last five or six years, I've changed that, and I've, I've said it's the second biggest privilege of my life, chairing a meeting of Alcoholics Anonymous. The greatest privilege is to be with someone when they take the third step and say the third step prayer and turn their lives over to the care of God. Wonderful things happened to me when I did that, and wonderful things happened to sponsees time after time. It was a, uh, when I took mine, it was, I came in on February the 20th, and and um, April the 7th was when I, after five or six times reading the 164 pages, I came upon the third step prayer and the third step, and I, I took it. And, and the great realization for me, the great gift for me, was that promise that my entire outlook and attitude toward life will change. Well, with that third step prayer, that promise was given to me. Until I, I said that prayer and abandoned myself to God's care, I thought that life was a uh, series of random happenings. Uh, no particular meaning to them. There were uh, good things that happened, good to being those things which pleased me and were in accordance with my will. And then there were bad things which happened, and that was... Things I did not like. Things I did not like. And um, and then when I sat out there in a cornfield up here in this wonderful Carroll County, I, uh, that's where I took this big book and, and read it uh, every night. Uh, being present with that book, I had to be present to that book because I knew that was going to save my life. And I went out there on the weekends, and on April the 7th, that was a Saturday, and as I I sat out there in that uh, cow pasture uh, without any thought of, of taking the uh, the third step. I just happened happened to come upon those wonderful pages sixty to sixty three, and uh, and I was given a great gift, given the great gift of of realizing that no things didn't happen. With this third step, my life in God's care, that uh, everything that happened in my life, in fact, comes from him. At the very least, he is allowing this to happen. And at the very best, he is directly causing it to happen. And so everything really is good, really is good. And... And it's a matter of my seeing things in terms merely of my preference and non-preference. But in fact, they are all good because they come from him. And this is the, I think this is the truth of, uh, this is a simple program, but it's not easy. When I uh, I read that line, I I was, uh, that gave me a little uh, stomach upset because, this program was was easy, man. When I came in, I could not believe how quickly the urge to drink was taken from me, and how peace of mind came to me, and how a grateful heart swelled within me, and how I found p- passion in these rooms, and life was good, and and I had come to believe this this big book implicitly every word, and. When I saw it, but it's not easy, I thought, man, I must be doing something wrong. I must be doing something wrong. Uh, but what I have found out is that 
and that it is this truth that everything that comes in my life is truly good from God's hands, but it is not always easy for me to embrace it and to accept it as I should. In my mind, I know I should, but is there, there is that distance from the head to the heart. And so it's a matter of, of me practicing every, every day uh, to see things uh, fundamentally that, that God is present in everything that happens and my life is in his care. That's pretty much the bottom line. That's the spiritual awakening for me, for me. But uh, my self-centeredness being what it is, when uh, when I go into a doctor's office and he says, "Oh, you got cancer," I, you know, I get a little uh, uptight with that kind of thing. Every morning, well, on on uh, I think it was New Year's Eve of my uh, third anniversary. I w- I was with some friends that I had spent many a New Year's Eve with before I came in, and as as midnight approached. I went out on the porch, and um, and I looked up, and and I I was started to review the year. Now, before I came into AA, I had often done that, reviewed the year. But on this particular occasion, I realized how different my review was. You know, it it had in previous years always been in terms of. Where was I in my career? Where was I in my romance situation? Where was I monetarily? What car what kind of car was I driving? What uh, how was I doing in athletics, so forth and so on? But on this particular occasion, it was where am I on the spiritual path? Given this last year, how have I expanded my spiritual program? And I thought about that, and the the answer came back, and it often comes back in this phrase, I really don't know. I really don't know, because my self-centeredness being what it is, my motives are often uh, so impure, you know, doing doing stuff for, um, for myself uh, rather than, you know, being completely other and doing it for, for God and what have you. So... So it's pretty hard, pretty hard for me to uh, to judge that. But the thought that came to my mind was, well, be all that as it may, every day this year I have said the third step prayer every morning. And every night I have thanked him for the extent to which I walk the talk of the third step prayer. And that's good enough for me. And when I look at that that prayer... I offer myself to you to build with me and do with me as thou wilt. That in the morning, that kind of sets my my mind. Uh, it's a re, it's a great reminder to me that this day is a day that the Lord has given me, and and Him being my director, everything that that unfolds in this day, He has got something to do with. He's putting that there for me for some reason. I mean, when we come here. I don't feel that this is just a random thing where we're all gathered together. Somehow or other, he has a reason, and hopefully, hopefully his reason in this meeting will be achieved. Um, and so that, that adds, there, there, there aren't that many big deals in my life anymore. I used to have a lot of big deals where I would get angry at what people said or what happened and so forth and so on. But, but they have, uh, they have decreased considerably. But I've come to uh, believe that everything is a big deal because everything is touched by his loving hands and comes down into my life. In that first line, that reminds me of that. Um, Relieve me of the bondage of self that I may better do thy will. Uh, What a wonderful thing to say. Uh, Self-centeredness is the root of my problem. So what more appropriate thing can I do than every morning ask him to relieve that? 62 tells me that neither could I much reduce my self-centeredness by wishing or using my own power. I had to have God's help. And so every morning I ask him for that help in this particular prayer. Specifically that I may do his will, which is the bottom line of this whole program as far as I'm concerned. And it's my self-will that gets in the way of doing that. 
And then that next line, take away our difficulties so that victory over them may bear witness to those we may help with thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. I mean, this third step prayer even puts a positive perspective on difficulties and problems. You know, what a, what a wonderful thing it is, as I see in meetings of Alcoholics Anonymous time after time. I mean, the, the tremendous problems and difficulties that people have, and they keep the faith, and they come out of that darkness, and they're smiling, and they're happy, and I think, my God, what a wonderful thing. What a wonderful thing. And and these things could not happen except by God's grace and my judgment. My, my judgment. I mean, people can't can't go through the things that I hear in these rooms and come out smiling and happy. And um and it's a great testimony to the power of God's grace. So so this, this prayer reminds me that difficulties and problems are not all not, not necessarily bad. That I have them and they are instruments by which I can bear testimony to God's great love and care and power. power. And then it it, uh, it ends that prayer with, may I do thy will always, and that that is the ultimate for me. Would that at every moment of every day I could in my thoughts and in my feelings and in my actions uh, be doing exactly what it is that he wants me to do. What a wonderful thing that would be. The... Uh, the book is uh, Clear Cut Directions, and uh, some people say, well, how do you turn your life and your will over to the care of God? Well, for the third step, there are there are pretty clear cut directions. Says, First of all, we had to stop playing God. Well, I had a problem with that. I never thought I was so delusional that I thought I was God. <laughs> but But as time has gone by, I realize that every time I get anxious, fearful, angry, at what comes down in my life, which is his will, that I am, in fact, saying, hey, my will, not thine, be done. So to that extent, when, when I'm upset with what happens, I am playing God. The next thing is we decided in this drama of life that God would be our director. I know what a director is. He directs me. And uh, and that's a great thing to, uh, with this third step, to put in, in my perspective that there is a... a a God up there who was writing a script and he's sending it down every day and he's putting me in different places and he's telling me what to do and what not to do and so on. So that's uh, that's the second thing to do, to, to try to get that perspective in my head. And then the third thing that it says to do is uh, we thought well before taking this step until we were certain that we could abandon ourselves utterly to him. And this is something that... Uh, I think is often missed as people go through the steps. They jump through this too too fast uh, without thinking about just what is involved in this and thinking that uh, all this is is a decision to do the rest of the steps. And it is a decision to do the rest of the steps, but that's only half truth. The other truth is that in the third step itself, there is a tremendous intrinsic value. Intrinsic value. And if you look at page 62, it says it says that most idea most uh, sim- most ideas good ideas are simple ones and this idea of the third step proved to be the new the keystone of the new and triumphant arch through which we pass to freedom the third step is the keystone of the new and triumphant arch through which we pass to freedom now, I talked to my friends in the construction business, and they told me that the keystone in an arch is is a very special rock, that if you take that away, that whole tower will fall down. And so that's what I, I believe the third step is, that keystone. And if you take that key, that third step away, or you don't really have that basically in, in one's life, the perspective of the third step, that God's present in everything that unfolds, that I know I am going to have trouble. I am going to have a lot of trouble. The um, and I'll just end with with uh, with this in uh, one of the great gifts. I, I used to think that these steps were punitive. They were uh, punishments that that were laid on us for being a bad boy or bad girl. And I, I found out that they're great helps. And this third step 
a few years ago, I'm, I'm walking uh, in uh, Johns Hopkins Hospital, walking towards the uh, operating room, and uh, I see a gentleman over on the side, and he's, he's looking at me, and he has this uh, sad look on his face. Uh, and, and I just got that, that thought that he saw me walking through that door, and I was going to be meeting a guy with a mask on and a big knife. And um, what a sad thing this was for Wayne. And the realization came to me was, and a smile came to my, my lips. But that's, that's the way I went through life, thinking that, that what was real was just on the surface. But what was really real on that particular moment was that, yeah, I was walking into that operating room, but with the third step, my life was in God's care. And I didn't have that fear and apprehension and anxiety that almost automatic when you're going in there for a, a serious operation. And, and that was a, that was an enormous gift. There was nothing that I could have caused myself. Nothing that I could have caused myself. But it was there. It was true. It was very, very real, very real. And and so that that happens in uh, so many instances in life, which are uh, are things which normally induce a whole lot of anxiety and fear. And they do, um, on, but they don't to the extent that I can uh, recognize that they are part of of this third step, and to the extent that I can commit these things to the uh, the third step and that's not only in dramatic things at the hospital but it's in everyday affairs where believing that God's present in meetings for example it does change the uh, ordinary uh, into the extraordinary all yours BJ thanks for sharing Wayne I'm BJ I'm not all I'm BJ, <laughs> BJ. Um, the the uh, the last, after the third step prayer where it says uh, and, and we just cited it was uh, abandon ourselves utterly to God oh, that's a powerful statement and uh, one thing's for sure I know that doesn't mean a little bit I know that's not a half measure uh, abandon ourselves utterly means a lot it means all we've got and uh, I want to remember that uh because I feel I've taken the third step prayer with a lot of sincerity. And, uh, and I do have to recommit myself to, to the third step prayer. To the ideas in the third step prayer. Um, another thing that Wayne said that, that's important to me, he talked about people in Mount Clarkson Islands having difficulties. And, uh, getting through, uh, these difficulties with their faith intact. Um, uh, you know, with the peace they feel that's been generated by their spiritual beliefs, and faith, and uh, program experience. And I've been fortunate enough, I know some other people here have too, of uh, being with uh, Alzheimer's who passed on in the program uh, when they're dying. And uh, in a few of these cases, it was very inspirational for me to uh, to see that what their concern was about somebody they were sponsoring that was having trouble. Or what about that guy that went out last week? In other words, they were not self-centered. They were, were they, they were thinking, they were coming towards the end and they were thinking about other people. So th that's a powerful witness for me. And that's, uh, they're the heroes of the program, uh, for me. I'm, I'm glad I've been around long enough to, you know, have that experience. Um, in preparation for this, uh, seven step prayer, I, um, it was sent to me because I sent out to a few of my friends. I said, I'm going to share this seven step prayer Thursday night. Help me. <laughs> so, uh, they sent one, of, they did. And one of them sent me the seven step prayer, you know, in big print so I could hold it here with me tonight. And, uh, I'm going to read the prayer and, uh, then I'm going to uh, take it one sentence at a time and, you know, flesh it out with my own beliefs and personal experience. Uh, okay, the seven-step prayer. It's on page 76 of the big book. It says, My Creator, I am now willing that you should have all of me, good and bad. I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character which stands in the way 
of my usefulness to you and your fellow and my fellows. Grant me strength as I go out from here to do your bidding. Amen. And a little addendum here. Uh, three lines down from the prayer, it says, Faith without works is dead. So they sort of tied it in. So uh, when it says, My Creator, uh, and I think, I don't know, it's not going to be think so much here, it's just whatever it's going to be. Before I speak, I always pray, God help me, and then I, I vow to tell the truth. Uh, uh, if I'm thinking, thinking, I say think a lot, and I do think a lot, but I'm going to think, I don't want to be analytical, I just want to be true to my experience here. I saw a Creator, and I thought about the other prayers in the, in the program, in reference to the first word of this prayer, which says, My. And the uh, third step prayer starts, God, uh, I give myself. And then serenity prayer, or the, the yeah, serenity prayer starts, again, God, uh, God. And then I was thinking of the Lord's Prayer, which is our, which is very inclusive of everybody. And, uh, and the St. Francis Prayer, which again says, Lord. Um, so, so it occurred to me that this, this, this prayer starting my makes it a very personal prayer. Um, so it's my creator. It's not saying it's not your creator, but it's saying it, it, it really personally brings it right down to my creator. Um, creator. A creator, uh, and I didn't even use a dictionary. Usually I use a dictionary. Uh, didn't use a dictionary. Creator for me is God. I believe I'm created by God. I believe my creator loves me. Uh, creator, as far as I'm concerned, is a synonym for God. Um, I think God is love. God is love. Um, I've noticed that our bodies seem to come and go. So I'm looking for permanency here. I think uh, God is spirit, and I'm spirit. Uh, beyond that, I don't know much. <laughs> These are beliefs that I have. I believe uh, spirits are eternal. I believe they're eternal. Um, I believe my higher power is first cause. Like, I didn't, I didn't create God. You know, they say, you know, a lot of people define God. Got all, it all worked out what God is. That's like creating God. I, I didn't create God. God is first cause. Uh, for me to know the truth about myself, I have to get still. Be still and know I am God. Uh, be still and know I am created by God. I mean, a lot of clutter has to be, uh, still before I can have this realization that I am connected to a higher power. Um, so my creator is a powerful ways of, uh, have meaning for me. And, and they're the first two words of this uh, seven-step prayer. Uh, seventh step, by the way, says uh, humbly, humbly, and I could talk a lot, humbly, humility is very important, but I'm not going to talk about it too much tonight. But humbly ask them to remove our shortcomings. The second sentence, um, oh, another thing, uh, okay, second sentence. I am now willing that you should have all of me, good and bad. All right. One of the things I do uh, periodically, not every day, is I get out of bed on my knees, I say my prayer, a uh, willingness to do God's will today, and please help me. And sometimes right after that, when I get up, I just raise my arms up and I say, it's yours. It's yours. Not my my bad traits are yours to transform. My good traits are yours to reinforce. I don't don't specify anything. Got this from Bud Ness. <laughs> Just you know, truth comes in all all sorts of ways. He says it's yours. So I started doing that because I felt that was real and that was authentic for me to do. It's yours. I don't I don't have to get specific. I just know I want to give up to you. It's it's like saying my life is none of my business. Please take it. Um. As far as good and bad goes, like I would say, it's bad to be dishonest, it's bad to be self-centered, it's bad to be selfish. How do I know that? Because the big book tells me so. Uh, it's good to be caring. It's good to be kind. 
Um, it's good to be honest. Um, these are practices. They're not like completely honest, completely not self-centered, completely unselfish. Uh, I have ideas about these things, but a lot of times I don't even know. I just don't know. But I do know that I want the good and I don't want the bad. <laughs> and uh, I also know that, uh, uh, you know, the sixth and seventh step are, are God steps. God does the work. We're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Humbly ask Him. These are steps for God to take. So what's what's my part? Cooperation, I think, and willingness. Um, good and bad. Um, uh, Jerry Ruth, who's not here tonight, but he, he used to say, uh, he says now and then, he says, sometimes what you think of as a bad trait might be transformed into a good trait. Like, for example, stubbornness you would consider would be an unfortunate trait. But when you get stubbornness about the program, about devotion and discipline to this program, it becomes, you know, a good trait. Um, all right, that's uh, that's this. That's the title and the first sentence. Now the second uh, the second sentence says it's a long sentence. Um, I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character which stands in the way of my usefulness to you and your and my fellows. Um, I've heard this story since I've been in a program, and I saw it on the, on, on the um, internet today. And I, I, I think it's true, but I, I, I can, I can, I can reference this on the in, in, internet. I wasn't there when Bill said this, but Bill said the reason he used shortcomings in the seventh steps, seventh step, defect of character in the sixth step, and the exact nature of our wrongs in the fifth step, was because he didn't want to be redundant. That to him they meant meant the same thing. Um, now he, this is this is a big deal. He's saying, "I pray that you remove from me every single defect of character." It's a lot, uh, which stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. Now is that an escape clause? I don't think so. Uh, when I first looked at this, maybe I thought, I don't remember thinking this, but I could have thought this because I'm kind of an analytical guy. Well, I just have to get rid of the character defects that get in the way of my use, but I can keep other ones as long as they don't affect my usefulness, right? Um, alcoholic thinking. <laughs> uh, so I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character which stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. I think every, every character defect, shortcoming, wrong about me uh, would impair my usefulness to other people. I can't think of any particular character defect, dishonesty, self-centeredness, selfishness, uh, that would uh, help me, or it would certainly impair my ability, like I said, to, to be of usefulness to people I'm sponsoring, my friends. Um, so it seems to me that the the more he helps me, and I have to cooperate with this, uh, diminish, eliminate my character defects, the better I'm going to be in terms of service in this program. The more effective I'll be. And we have that line on page 77 um, that relates to this second sentence. It says, uh, our real purpose uh, is to fit ourselves to be of maximum service to God and the people about us. Uh, real. The, the big book uses real a lot. A lot of times it's mentioned that if you're a real alcoholic, you're like this. And I'm always like that. Remember there's a paragraph, if you're a real, I'm, I always identify, yeah, that's me. Uh, and he uses real, we are not really cured of alcoholism, but we really have, well, no, we are not cured of alcoholism, what we really have is a daily reprieve contingent on the maintenance of our spiritual condition. We have a concordance, which I share with Mike. I keep it most of the time. He paid for it. It was $100, that big one with the blue cover. It's hard for him to let it go. But once in a while I get it. And we looked up really. And real and really, it's in there a lot. But um, that's not equivocal. If you, it says our real purpose 
Now, what's my purpose? Here it is on page 77. There's your purpose. Our real purpose is to fit ourselves. And how do you fit yourselves? Uh, by growing all our spiritual lines. Prayer. 12 steps, I believe. Uh, uh, to be a maximum. Maximum is another word like utterly. Doesn't mean a little. It means a lot. Service uh, to God and my fellows. And this word says, uh, may, I'll read it one more time. It says, I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character which stands in the way of my, of my usefulness to you and my fellows. That's like saying I want to be an instrument. Uh, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Lord, make me a channel of your peace. Uh, saying get out of the way. It says you've got to stay on page 62 so you're not, until you diminish that self-centeredness. Um, all directions. Another thing about these uh, shortcomings, defects of character, they're all painful. They all cause me pain. Very painful. So if, if I need an incentive, and I and I don't like, I don't experience, I, I experience pain, but I don't like pain. It seems that when I'm in emotional kinds of pain, which is, still happens, it can be traced to a character defect. All right, we're down to uh, the fourth sentence where it says, Grant me strength as I go out from here to do your bidding. Amen. This is a, a rephrasing of the last part of the eleventh step. which says, uh, I always have to say the whole step before I can pick up the last bit, like what's the fourth letter of the alphabet? Uh, <laughs> Sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood Him. Here's the part. Praying only for knowledge of His will and the power to carry that out. Well, here we're asking for the strength. Grant me the strength as I go out from here to do your bidding. So that's a rephrasing. I want to do God's will. I pray to do God's will. I'm convinced that God's will for me is the best. It's what I want to be. Uh, do I know the specifics of God's will? No. Uh, do I have some ideas? Uh, I've, I've chosen to believe that uh, for me, God's will for me is to, is to be active in this program, to participate in this program, to do what it says. Um, Wayne mentioned clear-cut directions. Thank God they're clear-cut directions. For example, uh, in the 11th step, uh, upon awakening, we constructively, uh, I don't know what we do. Upon a, oh, upon awakening, we ask God to direct our thinking. I do it every day. Uh, that's one of my things I always do every day. And I do that page uh, 77. Help me achieve my real purpose uh, to fit myself. How do I fit myself higher power? I want to be a maximum service. I do those two things every day. Um, Upon awakening, we ask God to direct our thinking. Now, why is that clear cut? Because it doesn't say when you're sleeping. It doesn't say at lunchtime. It says upon awakening. That's good. I like that. Then it says upon return, retiring, we construct what we do every day. It says uh, when agitated. No, it says as we go through the day, when agitated, we pause and ask for the right thought or action. Okay, have I been agitated today? Yes. <laughs> Did I remember to do that? Not all the time. Did I ever remember to do that? Yes, I did. Did it help? Yes. Calm me down. Um, these are examples of clear-cut directions. They're all through the book. Uh, there's nothing... And I mean, it's good to have a sponsor to clarify some of these things, but it, it's, it's, it's clear-cut. It's it's not uh, it's not complicated. Uh, it's simple. Once it, maybe it's not simple at first, but once it's explained, and not so much explained conceptually, but once you experience it and do it, and you get results, it's an experiential program, isn't it? It says here are the steps we took, which are suggested as a program of recovery. Here are the steps we took. Past tense, right? These guys did this stuff. 
many years ago. They didn't have a big book until 1939. They were uh, sorting this thing out for four years before they wrote the big book. We have a big book. They codified their experience. They wrote it down. Um, when I first came in, it was a while back, 30 years ago, there were guys that used to share. I remember Bill Nolan in particular. Their fathers didn't have Alcoholics Anonymous. And I remember one time at uh, St. Joseph's at the Irvington, how Bill got all choked up because his father couldn't have this program because it wasn't, it wasn't around. Now, even if you're an old guy, your father was around, you know, when the program was here. So you don't hear that story anymore. Uh, so for me, uh, the, God's will for me is, uh, do the program. Just do the program. And, uh, the last thing I, about this, uh, I want to talk about faith without works is dead. Um, that's not a complicated statement either, is it? <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's not a, it's not an into thinking program. It's an into action program. It's not, uh, talking the talk. It's walking the talk. It's, uh, walking the walk, not walking the talk. Um, so what, 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 what kind of works do we do? And again, I get it from Jerry. Uh, he says, um, and uh, sometimes, sometimes if you give him credit for it, he takes it. And other times he says, oh, I heard that. But anyway, th this one, uh, he said, uh, in terms of doing works, okay, God is more interested in, interested in our availability than our ability. Now, for me, that's just great. Because I'm thinking, man, I, I have ability. Uh, forget it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all about showing up. It's all about showing up and being available. That's what it is. That's all it is. And if God works uh, through you, anything good that happens to me, and I've heard this in the program, anything good that comes from me or through me, that's by the grace of God. It's not my ego. And the only thing that get puffed up is what? The ego. The ego gets inflated and deflated, but the spirit stays calm and sane and still and blessed and full of grace. So, um, did it. Thanks, thanks for letting me share. It just turned out I was going to call on somebody, but that's it. Thank you. Thank BJ and Wayne. It was a very special meeting. And uh, we're going to meditate now, and there's not too much else to meditate. I think you've been listening for the past 40 minutes to kind of meditate on what's been said. Um, but if you haven't done this with us before, it's very simple. We just kind of get quiet. It's your time. And we'll close with the Lord's Prayer. And I'll just start it off with a couple readings. This is the how and why of it. First of all, we had to quit playing God. It didn't work. Next, we decided that hereafter in this drama of life, God was going to be our director. He is the principal. We are his agents. He is the father, and we are his children. Most good ideas are simple, and this concept was the keystone of the new and triumphant arch through which we passed to freedom. When we sincerely took such a position, all sorts of remarkable things followed. We had a new employer. Being all-powerful, he provided what we needed if we kept close to him and performed his work well. Established on such a footing, we became less and less interested in ourselves, our little plans and designs. More and more, we became interested in seeing what we could contribute to life. As we felt new power flow in, as we enjoyed peace of mind, as we discovered we could face life su successfully, as we became conscious of his presence, we began to lose our fear of today, tomorrow, or the hereafter. We were reborn. We were now at step three. Many, many of us said to our Maker as we understood him, quote, God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and to do with me as thou wilt. Relieve me of the bondage of self, that I may better do thy will. Take away my difficulties, that victory over them may bear witness to those I would help, 
of thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. May I do thy will always. Unquote. We thought well before taking this step, making sure we were ready, that we could at last abandon ourselves utterly to him. We have emphasized willingness as being indispensable. Are we now ready to let God remove from us all the things which we have admitted are objectionable? Can he now take them all, every one? If we still cling to something we will not let go of, we ask God to help us be willing. When ready, we say something like this, quote, My Creator, I am now willing that you should have all of me, good and bad. I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character which stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. Grant me strength as I go out from here to do your bidding. Amen. Unquote. We have then completed step seven. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.